Hello and welcome to another edition of the Evid Screencast. My name is Christian Förster and this week we'll continue our series on color correction by setting the basic contrast of an image. In last week's episode we established that the brightness and contrast controls are not the way to go. Instead we'll use some controls on the Hue Offsets tab of the HSL controls. We have three sliders here. Gain, Gamma, Setup. Now setup changes the black levels, gain increases the contrast by increasing the highlights while leaving the black levels where they are, and gamma changes the midtones to make them become lighter or darker. So this is basically also the, the way you should do it. First do the setup, then increase the gain or decrease the gain in whichever way you want, and then change the gamma to your liking. What we can see here, we don't have a lot of contrast in this image. We are only using like half of the contrast ratio that we have available. So let's first of all change the black level. Change it down up until it becomes illegal and crank it back up again. So it stays within its legal technical limits. Then increase the gain. We don't want to overdo it because uh, this will blow out her forehead and we don't want that to happen. So let's not overdo it. As you can see now we have also lifted the setup a little. So let's get back down, get this back down here. And again increase the gain until the contrast ratio is the way you want it. Now this is pretty straightforward because most of the time you want the image to use the contrast ratio that is available. Now if it's supposed to be foggy, it might be different, you know, there's no need to, to, to use the whole contrast ratio if, if, if you want to display a foggy scene because you know it won't seem so foggy anymore. But uh, most of the time you want to use all the contrast that is available to you. So that's a pretty straightforward process. Now let's change gamma. Now gamma changes the gamma curve, that is the mid values of the grays, and will, you know, strongly change the look of the image. Depending on the scene that you want to correct, this can have look very, very different. So first of all, let's crank the gamma up. Look at the waveform again. Now this will make the image a lot lighter while not changing the setup and the gain too much. You'll make the image appear lighter, but you'll not blow it out because the midtones are getting lighter, the highlights are staying the way they are, more or less. As you can see, for example, the setup is affected quite severely and you'll have to always adjust your settings to your locks. Okay, now that is making the whole image lighter. You can also make it darker by turning down the gamma. You can see the distribution of brightness is a lot different now. And it definitely has a different impact on the scene. Now let's reset the gamma value by option or alt clicking on the enable button. That works with all the enable buttons, this one as well, all the, all the buttons. You can reset the whole tab for example by option clicking here. Let's undo that because we don't want to mess around with all corrections. And so, so let's go. She's looking very, very, um, I mean, there's something going on there, right? She's not looking happy. So let's just increase that feeling by turning down the gamma a little. Not too much, just a little. This is one way to set the contrast. There's also uh, automatic buttons down here that, you know, I usually don't use them. <laughs> If you're in a hurry, that's okay, but otherwise, why would you need an editor? Everybody can, you know, push a button. 
So let's just pretend that we can do it better by, by hand. <laughs> but this is the, these three sliders. Now, they are great and I like them a lot. The only problem that you have is that you cannot set at which point the gamma curve is changed. So you're saying, yes, I want the gray values to be darker or lighter, but you can't really fine tune which, which gray points you mean. Enter curves. Let's just turn off the correction. There we are, just the way we were before. You can see those sliders are also present in the curves tab but they are off if you have the HSL tab off. So The curve that is actually interesting to us now is the master curve. If you've ever seen a gamma curve, you're immediately familiar with what this is. The x-axis are the luminance values that go into the effect, and the y-axis are the luminance values that go out of the effect. So what you can do is, for example, just make the image a whole lot brighter. Now you can see all the luminance values that are larger than a 104 will be outputted directly as white. As you can see here, <laughs> that gives it all a very nice uh, natural look. So changing the contrast here is pretty straightforward as well. By pulling this button to the right, you can set the black level. Well, 20 is a bit much. Let's go with 16. And by turning this one to the left, you can set the white point. And changing the gamma curve is pretty straight, straightforward as well. Just click somewhere in the middle and pull this little button down or pull it up, increasing the gamma or lowering the gamma. Now this has some added options. You can strongly uh, influence the gamma curve by yourself. You can also just apply a gamma to a certain part of the image by saying, by adding another point and saying this is now at 115, 125, so let's go 125, 125. Now all the parts of the image that are lighter than 125 will not be affected by the gamma and the rest will be. Now don't bend that curve too much, it will posterize and look horrible, as you can see here. But you could, for example, lower the low gray values and increase the high gray values, thus uh, creating a very, very contrasty look. All right, that's it for manipulating the contrast of an image. Next week, we'll start uh, grading it color-wise. If you want to learn more about color correction, I strongly recommend Steve Halfish's book, The Art and Technique of Digital Color Correction. You can buy it from Amazon. And if you use the link uh, in the show notes to do so, I'll get a nice kickback. Thank you for watching this episode of the Avid Screencast. If you like, go ahead and subscribe to the podcast at avidscreencast.com or in the iTunes store. And if you have any comments or suggestions, like future show topics or anything, drop me a line at mail at avidscreencast.com or just comment on the website. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash avidscreencast and on Facebook, facebook.com slash avidscreencast. If you want to know what kinds of things I do professionally, check out editguy.de. This is where I promote myself. And uh, once again, thanks for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.